Yes, sir, you are mighty in my life. Can you say you are mighty in me? You are the Almighty. Shalom everybody, we are back, we're back, we are persistent today, and we will have the session the Lord has ordained for us, amen? So we're going to give everyone five minutes to log back on, and then we're going to start. Because today someone's life is going to be transformed, changed, and impacted by the Spirit of the living God, and that is not going to change. Shalom, shalom. I want everyone who is watching us to take and make sure you share this video because there are there's something I've noticed. Whenever I'm sharing a subject and there's a lot of resistance, it means the subject is is uh, is major. And uh, the 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 only subject I shared in the last three months that had that much resistance was ancestral powers. And as a result of this subject, we now have prophetic deliverance services. <laughs> if it wasn't for me teaching that subject, we would not have prophetic deliverance services that have now been delivering people via Zoom. It all birthed out of that subject. And now I'm teaching another subject called destiny relationships. So I want everyone to make sure you do extra to spread this video because obviously this knowledge and information is very crucial and we're getting a lot of resistance with it. Mm.
Welcome, welcome to everyone joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome. Uh, we have we are starting late, but we know why. Uh, we have had significant resistance uh, that's not really explainable. Uh, but that happens when we're teaching defining subjects. And as I said, the last defining subject we taught on ancestral powers, which gave birth to the prophetic deliverance services because of the response of people and their need for prophetic deliverance. And so now I'm teaching another subject called destiny relationships. So it's obvious that the enemy and the forces of darkness want to make sure that men and women do not fully understand the subject of destiny relationships. So he's very stupid because he should have just left us and then we'll just carry on and I may just teach the subject for two days. But because of this resistance, I think I'll stay on it for two weeks. Hallelujah. <laughs> for two weeks to make sure that everyone grasps it, everyone understands it, we'll have discussions about it, we'll have workshops about it, and then we're gonna go deep in this subject of destiny relationships. This is now crucial, amen? because we have been telegraphed that this subject is important. It's important. It's life-changing. Amen. And amen. So if you're on, make sure you share it. Make sure you share it, you share it, you share it. Send it on your feed. Create a watch party. Just make sure you do that because we need to get this message out. Amen. Okay, well, let's start. And uh, let's go into the Word of God. So today I have with me Pastor Deidre Leacock, and she is my spiritual daughter, and she's also one of the staff in, at Divine Visitation Assemblies, Amen. and she also works in our business, Caribbean Israel Venture Services. Okay, so Pastor Deidre, say hi to the people. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our awesome day for Destiny Relationships. Of course, we did have that resistance, and we know it's going to be a fantastic session. So don't forget, like and share, and put your questions in the chat. We want to hear from you as well. Definitely, definitely. So definitely put your questions in the chat. Yes. So we're going to start on Destiny Relationships. So I want us to go into the word. Let's go straight into the word. Let's go straight into the word. I want you to go into the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 from verse 3 to 6. Romans chapter 12 from verse 3 to 6. Mm -hmm. It says, I want you to find it, look for it. It says, for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing According to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Let us use them. So that's our key scripture that we're going to really focus on. But let me give you the actual background. The natural realm is built after the spirit realm. The natural realm re receives not only its inspiration, but it receives its instructions and it receives its models, its building codes from the spirit realm. I have been to heaven three times and earth is very similar to heaven. Earth is very similar to heaven. Now, I remember when Jesus was speaking to Jesse Duplantis because Reverend Jesse Duplantis, Evangelist Jesse Duplantis was a great man of God, went to heaven. And in his encounter with heaven, he actually asked Jesus, he said, Jesus, tell me, why does earth look so much like heaven? Oh, 
Why does heaven look so much like earth? And Jesus corrected him, it's not that heaven looks like earth, earth looks like heaven, because heaven is my taste. So heaven has mountains, so earth has mountains. Okay, the Bible says that Lucifer said, I would ascend up to the mountain, up to the mountain in the sides of the north. The Bible talks about Mount Zion, <laughs> Mount Zion, which is in the spirit realm, Mount Zion. There's a spiritual Mount Zion. Heaven has cities. There's a city there called the city of Jerusalem that is coming down. So heaven has cities. So earth also finally started to have cities because before earth only had rural areas. Then people were able to, to discern the template in the spirit realm and began to create cities because the spirit realm has cities. The spirit realm has animals. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, when he comes in Revelation chapter 19, is coming on a white horse. So where did he get a horse from? Did he kidnap it from the earth? No, the horse is in heaven. So there are horses, there are animals in, in the spirit realm. Now, the Bible tells us that when Elijah was taken up, he said the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. That means spiritual horses with chariots came to take him up. That means they were what? Horses. So they are horses in the spirit realm. They're, heaven has rivers. It talks about the river of life that flows from the throne of God. So there's a river there. So you see rivers on the earth. Now, heaven has streets. The first place to have streets was heaven. Heaven has streets. It talks about the streets in heaven. It talks about streets of gold. It talks about streets. So eventually man really tapped into that aspect of heaven and began to pave the street with tar. <laughs> Very different. You see, heaven, the streets are paved with gold. On earth, they're paved with some black looking tar, which you would not want near your body. Are you with me? So, but in heaven is paved with gold that is so brilliant, it is transparent gold. It's transparent gold. So heaven, heaven is the template for earth. So anything you see on earth originates in the spirit realm. If it's dark, it originates in the dark side of the spirit realm. If it's, and the spirit realm is very dark because of sin. And uh, if you, if you see it's, it helps mankind, it adds value to mankind, then it originates from where? The heavenly part of the spirit realm. So I want you to understand that. So that's why when Jesus was teaching, Jesus was teaching spiritual things, Jesus used the style where he would actually teach on something natural that mirrored what was in heaven. He, he would teach on something natural that mirrored. So Jesus used the mirror principle to apply, to teach spiritual realities because natural realities work like spiritual realities. Okay, now let's talk about the spiritual reality of spiritual alignment. So I want you to get it. So I want you to get in your spirit today. What is spiritual alignment? So to do that, I'm going to teach it in the natural. So in the natural, this is what spiritual alignment is. Now, this is my phone. This is my phone. Now, it's my phone, and I am engaged, our company is engaged in a, in a particular type of business. We engage, one of the areas of business is in the mining area. So I got a, I actually got a file. I got a file that was sent to my WhatsApp that had geological coordinates. But the problem is, my phone, I have never in my life had to read geological coordinates from a geologist because in my life so far, I've never had to deal with a geologist. The, the world of Andre had no intersection with the world of a geologist, but God has promoted our company and brought us 
into a particular realm of doing business. So I had to interact with this geologist. And this geologist sent me a file. The file came to my WhatsApp, but when I pressed it, I could not open it. I could not open the file, even though it was on my WhatsApp, because my phone was not aligned to the format of the file. Oh, I was me. My phone was not aligned to it. So this is what happens in which God could send you a breakthrough. He could send you a husband. He could send you a miracle. He could send you a divine intervention. He could send you a promotion. That means God could answer your prayer and your prayer has already entered into your space. So the file had already entered into my phone. It had already entered into the spirit realm over your life. It's already accessible to you, but you will not be able to access it if you don't do what? Realign. So I then had to go and I said, I can't open the file, but I can open the file. And, and I was told, Andre, you need to get a special app, a KMZ app, because it's a KMZ file. Never heard of KMZ file. I only know of Word and PDF. So I only move in the dimension of Word, PDF, or PPT, okay, which is PowerPoint. So those are the only files that we deal with. But now I had to deal with another file coming from another dimension. Look. Oh I had to deal with other files coming from another dimension of operation. So there are other dimensions that God is bringing into your life. But for you to enter into the, that dimension, just as the phone, you need to do what? So you need to realign. So I then had to go on Google Play Store and do what? I had to go and download a KMZ file. And because I'm a bit of an extremist, I downloaded three. <laughs> I downloaded three different KMZ files just to make sure one of them would work. I found the one that was 4.9, 4.7, 4.8. I thought I'm taking all three. <laughs> okay. Now, I've also had another situation in which my wife, I bought her a... Uh, a actual tablet to do Facebook Live. And when I bought this tablet, she wanted to use it for Facebook Live, but then she wanted to use it for other things. And we found that it did not have enough memory. Mm -hmm. So when we would seek to download a file, it would actually download a particular app on it. It would actually say, do, do, does not have capacity. Does not have capacity. So there are times in your life God wants to download, God wants to bring into your life a new dimension of living. But your mental capacity, your emotional capacity, your spiritual capacity cannot take what you have access to. So what did I have to do? I had to get my wife an, I, an SD card, put it in to increase the capacity of the tablet. And once I increased the capacity of the tablet, those apps were able to download. So spiritual alignment is when you increase your spiritual, mental, and emotional capacity to accommodate and to receive and to host a new dimension of God in your life. Mm -mm -mm. I need to say it again. So spiritual alignment is when you enlarge the capacity, when you enlarge your spiritual capacity, your mental capacity, your emotional capacity, and even your relational capacity to host a new dimension of God in your life. Because God is released into you in dimensions. It's why the Bible says that when Ezekiel saw the river of God, he said he saw a man and he was taken and the man was taken into the river of God up to ankle deep. 
So that's the dimension of God that is ankle deep. Then it was taken another thousand cubits and measured knee deep. Then another thousand cubits waist deep. That was a higher dimension. Then another dimension, which was rivers to swim in. So that was a greater dimension. And then from there, it will go greater and greater and higher and higher and higher. So, so there are different dimensions, different dimensions. So this is very important for you to understand. So a lot of people actually have over your life right now, you actually do not need to say a new prayer to receive an item from God. The item, what you're asking, is actually in the spirit realm hovering over you like a plane looking to land. But the runway is too small. Woo. Like a plane looking to land, and there's another plane on the runway. <laughs> like a plane looking to land, and there are items on the runway. So it's looking to land, but it cannot. It cannot. So Pastor Deidre, tell me, okay, what are you getting here? Any questions, comments? I mean, what are you getting from this? Coming uh, from me, I, I think it's important for all of us to pay heed and attention to this because sometimes where God wants to align you to, the picture that God shows you, you don't see for them, you don't see for yourself. And the best example they can use is me. Uh, I've been doing accounting all my life. At this stage, when I came to DV and Divine Visitation Assemblies, when I heard and understood what God wanted for me, it looked nothing like what that past was. Now sitting in a pastoral office, now doing cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a far cry from accounting, but now that I am in the seat and in the position of it, I can understand that my design and how he has designed me is aligned in this. And for me to walk outside of that will now go against my design. So sometimes it may look unfamiliar, but it doesn't mean that that's not what God has for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And I saw that. I, I actually saw how you had to increase your capacity, increase your, your, your mental capacity, emotional capacity, spiritual capacity, to be, able, to be able to host what God wanted to give you, what God wanted to do in your life, yeah. right? And uh, you had got a prophecy about it, but, but when it came, you had to do what? Enlarge, and you're still enlarging to be able to host what the Lord wants to do in your life. So that's why spiritual alignment, spiritual alignment is so important. Because here's the thing, spiritual alignment, not getting spiritual aligned, stops God from doing what he wanted to do. The children of Israel, when they came to River Jordan, did not spiritually align. Mm -hmm. They did not enlarge. Now, they were able to believe, they were able to believe God to be delivered from. So they were able, now, they were able to enlarge their spiritual capacity to believe that God could deliver them from Pharaoh. Because when Moses came, they didn't really buy into it that much. But they then began to, when they saw the miracles and saw everything, because the first time when Moses came and Moses uh, actually did the first miracle, I mean, Pharaoh said, let's, let's, let's make the burden more. Let us, it's like when you're casting the devil out. Just before the devil comes out, the devil gets worse. <laughs> so you need to understand this. Just before a demon leaves, it gets worse. <laughs> so when it, you can have a person sitting down and, 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 and the person says, I need to be delivered from a spirit of anger. And the person is sitting down very calm. When you start to deliver them, as the anger is about to leave, oh Lord, they could, I mean, they could take down 10 people. <laughs> Are you with me? And then boom, it leaves. So Satan always intensifies before he leaves. It's a strategy of darkness that you need to understand. So that happened in which Pharaoh said, what? I now want you to, to actually produce the same amount of bricks, but go and get your own straw. And if you don't get it, we will whip you. 
and he told the taskmasters, be even, be, be cruel with them. And the people went to Moses and said, Moses, you have brought trouble on us with your foolishness. You said God spoke to you. Right now, this, this God speaking to you has now made our life terrible. And so that's where they were. But they eventually enlarged their capacity. They eventually enlarged their capacity. And they were able to receive this move of God that took them out of Egypt and brought them to the promise that brought them out. And they were able to receive the miracle through the Red Sea. They were able to receive the miracles of manna. They're able to receive the miracles of quail and they walked through the wilderness and got to Jordan. So they were able to be delivered from bondage. When they went to Jordan, they were not in bondage. They were a nation that had laws. They were a nation that had process. They were a nation that had courts. They were able to receive all of that. But when it came to God giving them land, houses that they had not built, God giving them an actual land to call their own as a nation and to overcome the giants and Nephilim that were in the Canaan land. At that point, they had a mind freeze. They had a mind freeze. So they were able to be delivered from a demon, but they were not able to be delivered into greatness. Yes. So they received deliverance from but they were not able to enter into greatness. So, so the people who, they freeze at greatness. They freeze at greatness and they froze at greatness. Wow. wow. Okay. Yes, your comments. It's, it's a hard thing, but it's the truth. Uh, God calling you into a place of greatness and, and you staying still. I remember reading, I think, I believe it was in Judges, when I was reading about all these people, all these people that, that went into war and they never took the territory and they ended up dwelling, I think it was the Canaanites. Each tribe went in and they kept dwelling amongst them. They were never able to take the full territory. They became slaves. Other people joined them, but they never really took over. And I'm like, how is it that only Caleb and the descendants of Joseph was able to take their territory? What was it about them that put them in that position and that the other people just decided to dwell? It would have taken something extra from them, but they didn't do it. And okay. it will take something extra from us as well. Very true. And here's the thing. There was a tribe called Judah. This tribe not only took territory, it took more territory than was required and even offered some of his territory to other tribes. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to know something. This tribe of Judah is the tribe that Jesus came from. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the tribe of Judah is the tribe that is in Israel right now. Mm -hmm. So most of the people you call Jews are from Judah. Mm -hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. The Ethiopian Jews are not from Judah. They're not from Judah. Mm -hmm. so, the, the, so Judah is the tribe right now that is running Israel. The other tribes, they got scattered. Yeah. They're all over the place. That's it. I want you to understand how powerful this is because Judah was the tribe that even though Yes, they, they had more of a press in them okay, than the other tribes. They had more of a press and they were able to take more territory and see more of God's promises done in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I believe they were inspired from David because David was from Judah. So Judah had some tremendous men yes, who were men of vision who actually paid the price. You see they're able to pay the price. So that is key. That is key. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now let's, so we have established that, what spiritual alignment is. Now, spiritual alignment, there are three areas you need major spiritual alignment. Three areas that everybody needs generic spiritual alignment. It's like 
you is like if you are if you want to run uh, a, a, a actual streaming service like what we're doing with Zoom, you need a particular speed of internet. If you don't have that speed of internet, you will not be able to do Zoom effectively. That's a basic requirement. So there are other things that you need more speed for, but it's a basic requirement. Now, if you're now dealing with, with fulfilling God's plan on earth, there are three areas that you need to come into alignment with. Number one is worship alignment. Number two is alignment with your mission. And sometime in the week, we may talk more about this. But the third is, worship, is, is alignment with your divine relationships. And when I was preaching, I want everybody to go and listen to the message I preached on Sunday. So on Sunday, I preached a message. Uh, there seem to be technical difficulties in the internet service in the country with flow because there seem it was in the not explainable exactly exactly what happened and uh so there's nothing really we could do about it but we have it recorded and you can actually listen to the message and I encourage you to do that because it breaks spiritual alignment for you in great detail now while the when i got this message now you gotta understand i get messages I get a scroll. That's how the prophetic comes to me when I preach. I see a scroll. It's, it's, it's a grace that's on my life. And in the scroll, I see what I'm supposed to preach on. Now, and sometimes in the scroll, when the information comes, I go into a vision about that point. Mm -hmm. So, I had a vision. The, the Holy Spirit gave me a major vision. And I'm going to read it for you here. And in the vision, I saw, I saw a woman whose face was spotted with lots of acne. And the only reason why her face was full of acne was that she did not relate with the people that had the knowledge and ability to remove the blemishes. <laughs> and then the angel spoke to me and said, many people's lives are blemished because they do not relate with the people that will remove the blemish. You see, what you need to understand is this. When God made man, he intentionally made man with weakness and strength. Yes. Let me tell you. So if we look at the scripture in Romans chapter 12, in Romans chapter 12, which I read to you, it says, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith, Romans chapter 12, from verse 3 to 6. It says, as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function, so are we being many a one, and individually members one of another. That's deep. It's, it says, not only are we members of the body of Christ, we are members one of another. That means we are interconnected. Now, when did this interconnection happen? This interconnection did not happen on the earth. This interconnection happened in the spirit realm before you came to the earth. <laughs> you see, so before you came to the earth, not only was your destiny ordained, but the interconnected relationships. So when God made you, he didn't make you as an entity by yourself. He made you in connection to other entities. Ooh, you, see, see, you, you actually need to get that. When God made you, you see, because a lot of people do not understand how the system operates. You see, your body has a cardiovascular system. It has a lymphatic system. It has systems. We have the solar system. 
So they're systems. So God is systemic. So if you don't understand the system, you could be prayed and you don't understand the system and you'll be barren because you don't understand the system. So you need to understand in the system of God, it, when God made you, when God made you, he made you and then when he made you, he made you in connections with other people that he made at the same time. And he connected all of you together in eternity. Then he put you all into time for you to discover yourselves. Ooh, Jesus. My, my, my. For you to discover yourselves. And now this is what I saw. And I saw, okay, Richard, he says, relationships in the spirit are pieces of your puzzle that allows the picture of your destiny to be formed on the earth. Relationships in the spirit are pieces of your puzzle that allow the picture of your destiny to be formed upon the earth. So, yeah, 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 yeah. People don't understand this. They don't understand how the system works. The world system has a greater understanding. You know what it's called in the world system? They say it's your network. Because the people in the world system have been able to see in the spirit realm that achievement is network based. It's not individual based. That's why there is a law, one of the laws of wealth, which is biblical, but the first person I heard articulate this biblical law was a natural man who understood wealth. And he said, your network, your net worth is related to your network. Your net worth is related to your network. So a lot of people do not know that you were made in a relationship network. Mm -hmm. So if you come to the earth and all you know is you and you don't find the other people that are part of that network, your destiny will never materialize. Mm -hmm. Whew, over to you. <laughs> wow. That's an awesome, awesome statement, Bishop. Awesome, awesome statement. And we grew up and we heard no man is an island, yet we don't actually take that concept into reality. You really are not an island. You need people to allow you to fulfill the destiny that God has for you. And you use, I was, I'm, I'm so glad that God gave you the example with the acne. Even when you have acne and you use the acne medication, sometimes it burns to kill the things that are in there that it can begin to heal and you can put the other things over it. But some people for us are that acne medication and they need to tell us that hard thing that will allow us to grow and come into destiny. If you only look at people from the standpoint of just to rub your shoulder and to pat you on the back, then the character alignment that you need to have for destiny, you would never ever come into. You see, what I was shown is this. There are people who right now are fasting for God to remove the blemish of lack of financial opportunity uh, to remove the blemish of um, of uh, um, of of financial stagnation, barrenness, the 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 blemish of no progress in their life, the actual blemish of listen, the clock is ticking, I'm not getting married, all those type of blemishes are actually from their life. And guess what? They're actually fasting and praying. <laughs> when the answer could be in a relationship. That's it. You see, so they're fasting and praying. So this lady, when he showed me, this lady was looking to God to heal her acne, to heal her blemish. When somebody that was within an arm reach already had the grace and the answer for her acne. That's it. But she wanted to do it solo, me and God. 
me and God. Now, have you noticed that when Jesus began his earthly ministry, when he began his earthly ministry, Jesus Christ did what? He chose his relationships. And when he chose his relationships, this is what happens. In destiny relationships, each party participates in the other person's destiny. It's like you participate in my destiny, I'm participating in your destiny. Mm -hmm. There is, you see, there is a mutual participation in the destiny. It's not that you are participating in my destiny, I also participate in your destiny. There is a mutual participation in each other's destiny. They, Peter, was sent to the earth to be an apostle. Mm -hmm. Jesus was sent to be the savior of the world. They were paired together because Jesus will do what? Train Peter to fulfill his role and mm -hmm. Peter will help Jesus to do his role. Yes, so they both participated in each other's destiny. You see, that is why selfishness is, is the enemy of destiny. Mm -hmm. Not understanding this is the enemy of destiny. So spiritual alignment also involves spiritual alignment. <laughs> wow, there's a deep thing God has told me to show you. S spiritual alignment also involves alignment in worship. That is vertical alignment. There is alignment with, within you. Which, and then there's a horizontal alignment, which is your relational alignment. Now, the Holy Spirit told me to share this principle with you. In the realm of the Spirit, men understood this principle. Kalabasatatai. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to drop a Holy Ghost wisdom bomb right now. Men understood this principle that if you have a parliament meeting or you have a board meeting, Decisions cannot be taken except there's a quorum. What's a quorum? They would say two thirds of the board members need to be there. If it's a parliament, two thirds of the parliament need to be there. There needs to be a quorum. If there isn't a quorum, if there isn't a quorum, authority is not there to make decisions or change things except there's a quorum. Well, in destiny, for certain things from heaven to be released to you, you need to have a relationship quorum. You see, because there's certain things God knows he cannot release it to you because, because guess what? You don't have a relationship to mentor you. You don't have a relationship to intercede for you. Yes, you don't have relationships that cover you. You don't have people that back you. You are just by yourself. And he knows what he's about to give you. You can't handle by yourself. So you need a relationship quorum around your life. Otherwise, that thing cannot be downloaded to you, even though it's yours. Yes, Somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's it. That's Even it. yours. So there are people who they do not have a divine relationship quorum. It is just them. Or oh, me and my mother. That's it. You and your mother is not a quorum. Do you realize that Jesus' ministry did not go to the next level until he had his relationship cabinet? Yes. He had his his 12. Then he had the woman who looked after him. Then when it was time to go to the next level, he added the 70. Because it's the law of relationship quorum. So I've come to tell you, this series is mega. Yes, because there are people who you don't have a divine relationship quorum. Therefore, you don't have the authority, the relational authority to cause some things to happen in your life. Ooh, listen, yeah. listen, there's some things God will never do in my life until I got married. 
but you see, in, you see, now I'm confusing some people. So people are like, what? you see, there's some things I knew God would never do in my life until I got married. Because to do it in my destiny, you see, because I know in my destiny, I am supposed to father a move of God. I'm supposed to father a move of God. I have a music type of calling. Now, with that music type of calling to father a move of God, I need a woman beside me. I need a sailor beside me. I need not only I'm a father of nations, I need a mother of nations beside me. So I knew I needed that. So I knew for my destiny, until I have a mother of nations, some things that God wants will never be released. And then there's a whole group that I need around me in which I participate in their destiny, they participate in my destiny. Because when God released us into the earth, we were connected. Yes. Now, let me share with you one more law because the laws are too much for some people. They have to go and meditate on these things because the implications of them are hot, right? So I'm not even starting the four types. So you're coming on tomorrow with me, okay? And uh, <laughs> tomorrow we have on Pastor Juanita. So it's going to be Pastor Juanita and Pastor Dedu. You're both going to join me. So so you 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 are going to be with me all week. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. <laughs> They're going to be with me all week. So you begin with me, going to end with me. Okay? Okay. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. And then the others are going to join me because we have Pastor Juanita is on Tuesday and then Pastor Anne-Marie is on Wednesday. And then we have to fill Thursday and Friday. And Thursday and Friday will be filled. Amen? Amen. By my power. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bless the Lord. So the next law is this. Huh. It's the law of hmm, foreknowledge. What is foreknowledge? It means to before know. To foreknowledge. Now, they, and I call it the law of relationship foreknowledge. All of you, I am sure, there is people that when you meet them and when you start to talk to them, all of a sudden, a body of knowledge about them just awakens in your spirit. And you say, it's like I've known him all my life. Because all of a sudden, you intuitively know how to relate with the person. Yes. Because every person is different. You need to know how to relate with them. But when you meet people who you have relationship for knowledge with, your intuition tells you how to deal with them because you already have a body of knowledge. It's like you get them but you wonder, how do I get them like this? When there's some people I've known for 20 years and I still don't get them. <laughs> it's like, ah, I mean, well, we've been relating for the last five years and I don't get you. You, you, you we, we, this, we, 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 but there are these folks who, you just meet them, they meet you and they just get you. That's because their spirits have what? For knowledge. I remember when I met my wife, there are other people that I've met. There are people on my team. When I met them and we spoke and we spoke, it's like I knew them. I remember the first day we met. We actually met on the phone. Yes. When we met on the phone and we spoke, Instantly, I felt a connection with you. And I, I believed you felt a connection too. Yes. Yes. And I also, as we were speaking, I began to see the spirit about a condition in your body. <laughs> Share that testimony. <laughs> so we met on the phone. Share that. <laughs> yes, it was, it was definitely a divine encounter for me and a divine time. I remember 
coming back from the States and I knew that my season had ended where I was before in terms of where I fellowship. And I didn't know where to go. One of my friends had said to me, I met this man and she'd been saying him to, about him for a while and I would not call him. For some reason, this time, Holy Spirit, of course, told me to call. And in my heart, I was like, I don't want to see him. If he is a true man of God, he's going to be able to tell me exactly what I am going through from off this phone. And lo and behold, that is exactly what happened. And he was able, I was having the challenges with my throat. And he was able to tell me, you're having challenges with your throat. I said, no, there's no way that you could have known that. So for me, I had my own conversation with God and how I wanted the encounter to go. And God confirmed it for me. And three years later, I'm still there. So be open to your divine connections. And the thing is, I delayed it because I've been hearing about him for like six months prior and I would not call. So that's also a lesson that your connection could be there and you choose not to connect to the person. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. What a powerful testimony. So there is the law of foreknowledge. Yes. A law of foreknowledge in which there, there because when you meet a divine connection, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will actually download information in your spirit about how to relate with that person. Yes. And particularly if you're somebody who understands about relationships, because every person has their own unique personal protocol and their own personal unique design. And to relate well with them, you need to understand that. And that information about people's personal protocol and personal design is downloaded. Now you still learn about them but there is some core things that are just put in you and you just like, you, you just are able to track and just know about this person because the law of relationship for knowledge. Yes. Now you see this in Jesus's life when Jesus, now who were Jesus's inner, inner circle? Peter, James and John. Now you're gonna see something that when Jesus, the 12 disciples were part of his divine relationships, uh, critical to divine relationships, and divine relationships are eternal. They don't end on earth, they continue in heaven because the interconnectivity is eternal. Yes. You see, the interconnectivity, the, the interdependency, because it's an interdependency, it is, it is eternal. Okay, so when Jesus met Simon, because his name was Simon. What did he do? He gave him a nickname. He changed his name. He says, you are called Simon, but from today, I'm going to change your name and call you Rock. Because the word Peter is Petros. So what Peter heard, he didn't hear Peter. He had Rocky. So he was calling him Rocky. So Jesus called him, hi, Rocky. So that shows you, so here you have you, you have a new member of staff, and I say, okay, Deidre, Pastor Deidre, I call you Pastor Deidre, I'm going to, I'm, in, in here, in this team, I'm calling you another name. That's to tell you how relational Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Then, when Jesus met the other two, James and John, he gave them a name. Mm -hmm. He called them Bajonas, sons of thunder. <laughs> Jesus. He said, Oh, both of you, I'm going to change your name, call you Sons of Thunder. So and so those people that he gave those names were his inner, inner circle that he took with them to the Mount of Transfiguration. They took with them to Gethsemane. They took with them to Jairus' house. Wow. <laughs> and so, are you, are you, are you seeing that? So, this is relationships because your alignment, your, your, there's a vertical alignment with God. There's alignment with yourself and there's a horizontal alignment with your relationships. A lot of people only think of the vertical alignment. The Lord said the vertical alignment affects your promotion. The horizontal alignment affects your capacity. He said, if I need to build a building high, I need to widen the base. Yes. And some of you, you're asking for a height that your relationship base cannot take. 
So your lack of your your lack in your relationship base is actually costing you. Yes. Woo! And it's important <laughs> to be introspective as well and, and to and to look at yourself and ask, do I have the things that I need or the people around me to be able to build what I need? And at that time, you you begin to evaluate your relationships as well. Where does each person now fit? in my life and be able to accurately position them in the place that they're supposed to be. Because if you position them wrongly, it doesn't, you don't build, you just stay there. You don't move. So being able to accurately position the relationships that God has given you and is given you as well, you need to know where everybody fits. Very, very much so. Very, very much so. And we're going to go into that tomorrow where we deal with the four types of divine relationships, four major types of divine relationships. And uh, they really, God gave me, showed me there are 12 types of relationships, but there are four different categories. Mm -hmm. So there are four categories of divine relationships. So we're going to deal with the categories of these divine relationships. Mm -hmm. And then who knows, next week we might deal with the 12 types because the devil doesn't like this subject, so I never was going to go deep. I was just going to teach about it a little bit. But because of the resistance, we are going to go into the depth of it. <laughs> By the time we finish, people would have horizontal alignment. Yes. There are major changes that happen in the lives of people. So do you have any questions? Let's read what the comments are. And uh, we want people to be sharing this. Let's look at the comments. What are people saying? Wow, wow, wow. Are you getting this revelation today? Are you getting this revelation? Oh my God, are you getting this revelation? Mm. Wow. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm. You see, what we're teaching is not knowledge and wisdom you can easily find. This is wisdom from heaven. And it is so critical for our lives and destinies. Mm -hmm. So is, does anybody have a question? You can put it. You can put it. You can put it. Hallelujah. I love what um, Minister Kerry Brathwood said. We need depth. Because for you to have change, you need depth. For sure. You need depth. So you're, Because if you have a shallow understanding of a subject, you, you need depth of the subject. There's a depth of a subject. You see, let, let, let me explain something to you. <laughs> I move with great men. Anybody who knows me knows that I operate in with great men. Mm -hmm. In the circular, in the spiritual world. And all great men, and even when with me, all great men are icebergs. <clears throat> what do you mean the icebergs? You see the top on top. <clears throat> but the depth, you can explain. The icebergs, now the iceberg that sank the Titanic was the size of a mountain mm -hmm. underneath. So when you understand, icebergs are, the best way to describe an iceberg is a mountain of ice. It's a literal mountain. It will have the base of a mountain. So there are icebergs that are bigger than the highest mountain within the Caribbean. There are icebergs that are bigger than mountains in countries. But the peak is small. So all you see is the peak that emerges out of the water. So you see the person and you think, ah, you see the person say this and do that. And you think, oh, this is the wisdom operating behind the person. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. There is a depth. So when we're talking about depth, we're speaking about the depth of an iceberg the depth of an iceberg. Now, when we say people are shallow, now there is something else from an iceberg. I think they're called drifters. They, these ones, and, and I'll get the right name for you tomorrow if the name is wrong. These ones 
a big on top, but there's nothing under. So you have two types. You have icebergs who are, you just have a small tip on top. You could have an iceberg that is there's two feet above the water and underneath is a thousand kilometers. <laughs> and its base is 3,000 kilometers. If a ship strikes, you, you are finished. And it's so important to, um, to add to that point, to be discerning because you might encounter your divine relationships and from eyesight and not seeing them by the spirit, you don't discern who the person actually is and you misclassify them and you miss what God wants to do with you and through you. Uh, thank God for prophetess and your wife. She's sharp like that because when I came to the church, I came and I sat in the back and I got out of church fast enough. As soon as you say church dismissed and one day she called me and said, I see you. I made sure I did nothing. And she said, I see you. She was discerning to see what God had placed on the inside of me. Amen, amen, amen. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. Wow, very true. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So right now, we are going to pray for people right now mm -hmm. because I, I sense the anointing. Wow. And I just I, I just saw literally the game of the spirit, second chance anointing. Yes. Because there are people who God is going to give them a second chance with relationships. He's going to give them a second chance to build their relationship base. He's going to give them a second chance to build their relationship base. You see, it's important to build your relationship base. Now, they, just as there's an anointing to heal, there's an anointing to connect. So, so some people, they think, oh, right now, I just need the anointing to prophesy. I just need the anointing to heal. I, no, sometimes you don't need healing. So sometimes you need four relationships in your life. Yes. And those four relationships, your total life will change. Yes, sir. With four relationships. Yes. This added to your life. And, and so I believe that in these two weeks, hi, mm -hmm. if I be a prophet, if I be sent as an apostle of wisdom to my generation, there shall be a, 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 a mass of relationship connections yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Divine connections will be created. People's eyes will open. They will discern. They will understand the dynamics of relationships and great things will emerge. Can yes. somebody say amen? Amen. Uh, amen. amen. Let's lift our hands. We're going to start to pray. Yes, I want you to pray this out for me, everybody. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, discern what you're saying to me. Discern to discern what you're saying to me. The hour has come. The hour has come for me to build my relationship base. For me to build my relationship base. For me to build a divine relationship quorum. For me to build a divine relationship quorum that will activate. That would activate next phase of your agenda for my life. The next phase of your agenda for my life. I decree this in the name of Jesus. I decree this in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. I decree this in the name of Jesus. I decree this in the name of Jesus. And I receive the grace. And I receive the grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Jesus. this is divine grace for connections. Yes. When Abraham sent his servant to go and find a wife for Isaac. He said, God who I serve will send an angel. And this angel will go with you and do the connections. So right now, be there is 
of relationship angels that do, connections, that do connections. So right now, I am going to be an apostle. Heavenly Father, I now pray that the people of the Son of my that the relationship grace, the relationship anointing in the mighty name of Jesus will impact in the mighty Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I decree the relationship angels in the mighty name of Jesus to transformation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the comments and the from their eyes in the relationship yes. in the name of Jesus. Because yes. them who are not supposed to be part of them. Hallelujah. Yes. Said they they were with us and they left us. But yes. the reason left us is because they were never supposed to be with us. <laughs> and then they who are supposed to be with you in the name of Jesus, do not discern it. Oh, and the not discern it. And they treat you common when you are uncommon. Oh, right now, for divine revelation, for divine for your angels to work among your people. Hallelujah. Jesus in the in the name of Jesus emerge in Jesus name amen 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 told me to say say something to everybody to get delivered you may only need one divine connection but to step into greatness you need a cabinet <laughs> Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. I need to say this again. To get delivered, you may only need one divine connection. But to get into greatness, you need a cabinet. You need a cabinet yes. of people around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I decree that the yes. wisdom and the anointing grace for the building of this cabinet will emerge. Ha. Can someone on Facebook say, I receive this grace? We receive this grace. grace. Can somebody say, I receive this grace? Can somebody say, I receive this grace. In the name of Jesus, I receive this grace. Amen. Grace. I receive this grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, shalom, love you, and let's say together, my greatness, my greatness shall not be hidden. My greatness, greatness not be shall hidden. not be hidden. Just reminding people for your giving, your tithes and offerings can be given at divinevisitation.com or fwnglobal.com or to the elders and to the elders that are in your area if you are in Barbados. Shalom, and we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow. And Pastor Winita Bynum. No, <laughs> Pastor Winita Birchwood. Oh, God. <laughs> Pastor Winita Birchwood. Pastor Winita Birchwood. <laughs> oh, God. Bless the Lord. Okay. Shalom. Bye. Bye.